about 20 minutes, and I want I wanted to share a word with you the Lord laid up on my heart. Amen. 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 Praise God. And we're just so happy to be here with you and uh, to see all of you. And listen, it is a pleasure, amen, to be here, amen, in the house of God one more time. Amen. It truly is. It is a pleasure to be here. And I want to let you know that I don't take this lightly. I even youth service, I don't take it lightly. Amen. amen. And I just thank God for having this opportunity to come. And again, I want to say thank you for all of the members that have come and, uh, and, and that are with us and that have been here. Uh, your faithfulness. Uh, I just want to thank God for each and every one of you. And if I haven't told you lately, I want to tell you this again, is that Pastor loves you very much. I really, really do. And I don't tell people that all the time that I love them. Amen. Unless you're close to my heart. Amen. And so I just want to thank God for each and every one of you. I want you to turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. And uh, I want to continue on. Uh, not only just a portion of the series that we've been ministering about, we've been talking about coming back to basics. Amen? Amen. 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 Coming back to basics. And before you can build a house, you first of all, we said that you need to know who your father is. Y'all remember? You need to know who your father is. And second of all, you need to know who you are. Isn't that right? Man. You need to know who you are. And then the other thing is that you need to know who the enemy is. Yes. And we keep saying that there is a fight, there's a spiritual battle that's going on here. And so you need to know who the enemy is. If you're going to fight with somebody, well, you definitely need to know who you, who it is that you're fighting against. Amen. Amen. And the scripture lets us know is that we're not fighting against flesh and blood. No. But we're fighting a spiritual warfare. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. And so we want to kind of continue on with that. But I want to take a little different twist. Amen. A little different twist. Amen. Today. And we want to talk about, uh, it's now since we worship God, we know who our Father is, and we know who our uh, we know who the enemy is, and we know who we are. We want to make sure that we know that we worship and praise a God who sees all. Amen. He sees us. He sees us. So you look at your name and say, He sees us. He sees us. Some of us don't think so, but He sees us. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Did I say First Samuel or Second Samuel? First Samuel? Okay, let's go to Second Samuel. I'm sorry. Second Samuel. The second, second Samuel, the eleventh chapter. Yeah, praise God. Second Samuel, the eleventh chapter. Second Samuel, the eleventh chapter. And I want to speak on a subject to all of our young people and all of us here. Amen. I want to speak on a subject about God sees and He rewards. God sees. In other words, He's looking. God sees and He rewards. And just the other day, there was a young man that was doing something in the classroom, and he had a pencil, and he was, instead of writing on the, uh, writing on the paper, he was writing on the desk. Uh -huh. And when I walked up and I saw him, and his counselor was walking by, and I stopped him. Y'all know Brother Kassam, sometimes he comes with yes, me, that yes. is, that he's one of the counselors. So I stopped him, and it was one of his kids. And when I stopped him, I said, Brother Kassam, I said, look here, look at your boy over and so your boy, he was over there, and he was just, and he was behind some old kids, and he was just, and while he was so busy writing on the desk, he didn't notice us watching him. So I was just sitting there up, and I was just watching, I said, I know he's not actually writing on that desk. And he was over there, he was a brother boy, he was going to town. And so all of a sudden, brother, uh, brother, uh, brother Kassam, he said, mm, Brother Johnson, hold my bag for me. So he got the bag. And he was so busy writing on that thing over there. Boy, he was behind some old kids. And he walked right up on him. Walked right over there on him. And did like this. He said, son? He said, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> He said, what you doing right on that thing? I, I was just, I, 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 he didn't know what to say. Sometimes when we're doing things that we're not supposed to do, and we get caught sometimes we don't know what to say. Amen. 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 And so from looking at that, I thought about this. God sees us. Uh -huh. <laughs> the time that we don't think God is looking at us, he sees us. Amen. Amen. In 2 Samuel, the 11th chapter, it says that, And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle. That David 
sent Joab and his servants with him, and all of Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Reba. But David, David tarried still at Jerusalem. He stayed in Jerusalem. When everybody was out fighting, David stayed back in Jerusalem. Okay, we're going somewhere with this. I want you to get the picture. And it came to pass as evening time, when it got in the evening, started getting dark, that David arose off out of his bed and walked up on the roof. Somebody say the roof. The roof. He walked up on the roof. Of the king's house. Now the king's house was over everybody else's house. He could see down and see the roof of everybody else's houses. So one evening he walked out on the roof. And when he walked on the roof, he saw a woman washing herself. In other words, she was taking a bath. Okay? And the woman was ugly. Oh, and then it said, I'm going to try to see if y'all are right there with me. The woman, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman and found out who she was. And her, her name was Bersheba, and she was the wife of a guy by the name of Uriah. Somebody say Uriah. Uriah. And David sent messages to her, and she came in unto him, and they had a Valentine's Day. <laughs> and she was purified from her uncleanness. In other words, doing the ministration. Amen. She... And she cleaned up herself, okay? We're not going. Everybody know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. After she got through, then she went and took a bath, freshened herself up, and then they called her, and this happened. And when this happened, David called him and said, that's a beautiful woman. Come on on here. Let me throw you some sweet words and whatever. And the scripture said they had a relationship. And when they had a relationship, she went back home. And when she went back home, verse 5 says, and the woman what? Conceived. In other words, means that she got pregnant, right? And she Sent and told David, and David said, I am with child. Now, we know that a lot of you who don't know the story, I'm just going to hit it in part so we can understand, that the scripture said from the beginning that when the time that kings went out with the armies, this was a time, the springtime, when all the kings went out with the armies, leading their armies, they were busy doing some things, they doing the thing they were supposed to do. David didn't do that. David laid back. And he sat back, and because he wasn't in the place where he was supposed to be, he got in trouble. And see, when we're not doing what we're supposed to do, and being in a place we're not supposed to be, we'll get in trouble. How many of y'all ever, uh, some of your adults and y'all, some of us that are here, how many times have you heard your parents and say, I don't want you to go over so-and-so house, and we end up going over there anyway. I don't want you to go over, over I don't want you to be hanging out with the wrong crowd. I don't want you to be going over so-and-so. I don't want you to hang out with that boy. I don't want you to hang out with that girl. And before you know it, it seems like, what is it about us? We always want to do what we're not supposed to do. We want to go where we're not supposed to go. Why is that? Look at your neighbor and say, why is that? Why is it when mama didn't tell us not to do it, we want to do it? Why is it when they tell us don't eat that cookie, we want to reach our hands in that cookie? And got chocolate all on our hands, and chocolate around our mouth, and then we say, who ate this cookie? Mm -hmm. Let me see your hands. Mm -hmm. Evidence is all on your hands. That's the way, that's the way sin is. Sin is all on our hands. And some of us can hide it a whole lot better than others. But wrong is still wrong, amen? amen. And right is still right. Tell your neighbor, say, right is still right. I don't care who says it. Right is still right. But I come to let you know that God sees us, amen? God sees us. And we know the story. He went on and he wanted to make sure that everything was okay. So what he did, she was already married. He had an affair with the woman. They call that adultery. Come on, say adultery. Adultery. Adultery is when you're married to somebody and you cheat on them and you go out and have an affair on them. That's called adultery. Come on, say adultery. adultery. Fornication is when you're not married and you have sexual relationship. That's called fornication. And God said it was wrong. Amen. 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 I ain't going to hope, but God said if we're doing something and we're not married, God says it's wrong. That's the word of God. I didn't make it up. That's what the word says. Amen, amen. So I want to let you know that he tried to fix it up. So what he did, he went and got his her husband 
and tried to bring him in off the front line of the war and say, listen, man, I want you to go to your house. Go to, I'm going to give you a break. Go to your house. Go to your house. And when you go to your house, I know you want to have a good time with your wife. Everybody else is working. Everybody else is fighting. But I'm going to give you a break. And so the Bible said that Uriah came in, but Uriah was so honorable that he did not go to his house. He said, how can I go to my house when my brothers is out there fighting? So what he did, he said, I'm going to lay right here at your door. I'm not going home. He was honorable, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He was an honorable. He, he respected the king. And the king said, listen, my little plan didn't work. So what I'm going to do here, let me tell you this. Let me get him drunk. I'm going to get him drunk and, and just get him all kind of wine and let him enjoy himself. And then turn around, I'm going to send him home. But when he got drunk, he ate the, uh, the king's food. He got drunk. And instead of going home, he stood out there and he slept in the bed with everybody else at the king's house. And the king said, well, what's wrong with this man? I'm giving him wine and drink. I'm giving him a chance to go be there with his wife or whatever. How come he's not doing that? See, sometimes, sometimes when you're doing wrong, you can't make a right out of wrong. Yeah. Wrong is still what? Wrong. You can't do that. So, so the king said, listen, I got to cover up my sins. Sometimes that's the way we do when we know that we done got caught in something. Or when we think we done got caught in something, to try to get by, we try to find an easy way out. Amen. So what the king did, and we're going to our message, what the king did, the king said, he put a, he sent a note by Uriah, by him being so honorable. He wrote a note and said, put Uriah on the front line so he can be killed. And so he wrote the note and gave, and the king gave that to Uriah. Uriah got the note and said, yes sir, I will. And so he gave the king. And Uriah was so honorable, he was so honest that he didn't even open up the letter. He just took it to the head captain. And the head captain read it, and it said, put Uriah on the front line so he can be killed. And that's what he did. He put him on the front line, and he was killed. And so the people, the captain wrote back and said, guess what? Your servant has died. And so when the king got it, he said, everything is all right now. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, I got away with it, got away with it. I took another man, woman, took another man, woman, yeah, yeah. and boy, he was going forward with it. And all of a sudden, why he was sitting up there, he was dancing, be bopping and going on. All of a sudden, why he was sitting there, man, and all of a sudden, God sent a prophet by the name of Nathan. Yeah. And Nathan, a prophet, the preacher came in. And when he came in, Nathan was sitting on his seat. He was sitting up there. He would be popping and listening. Boy, enjoying it. Say, I got me, a, got me another woman. Got me a wife. Man, I got me another wife. And you know what? David had a whole lot of wives. Amen. What is it about God gives us something and we don't want that that God gives us, but we want what belongs to somebody else? I don't understand that. But that's the way, that's what happens to us. Sometimes that's just not nature. So what? Have anybody get anything out of this here? This is what has happened. Listen, this is what has happened. While he was sitting out, while he was chilling, just chilling, just digging on the scene with the gangster lane. Here we go. He was going. He was just chilling and going on. And all of a sudden, the preacher came in. Prophet came in. He said, "Mr. King, Brother King, King, I've got a problem here." He said, "What's the problem? I'm the king here." He said, "Listen, something happened out here, and I want to see if you can take care of the problem." He said, "I'm the king. I can take care of it. What is it?" He said, "That was a man." They had a whole lot of sheep. And a friend came in and he said he was going to have a barbecue dinner for his friend. But instead of cooking one of his sheep, he went down the street to a man who only had how many sheep? One, one wow. sheep. And instead of killing his sheep, he went over to the man that only had one sheep, took his sheep, brought him over here, killed him, skinned him, and had a barbecue lamb. David said, is that what happened? He said, yes, sir, that's what happened. David said, I guarantee you, as long as I live, that man is going to die for what he did. He's going to give back seven times more than what he stole it from there. And David and that prophet looked at him and said, guess what? You're that man. You're that man. <laughs> and the king said, what? What do you mean I'm that man? He said, God saw what you did. Yes. God saw how you took Uriah's wife, had made intimate uh, worship with her, and conceived, and turned around and put, took her back to her house in her back, and had her husband killed.
still to try to cover up your sin. I come to let you know it's coming up again. Yes. You may have thought you got by with something, but it's coming back up again. And young people, let me tell you here and all of us, no matter what we do in this life, it's coming back up again. We are make, you may get by with things, but you are not getting away. God's eyes is in every place beholding the evil and the good. Let me go to some of the scriptures here. And let me take, go with me to Proverbs 5 and 21. <clears throat> Proverbs 5 and 21. Let's go to some of these scriptures here. And let's see what the word says. Proverbs. Proverbs 5 and 21. <clears throat> when I get there, I'm just going to start reading. Proverbs 5 and 21. Listen to what it says. It says, For the ways of men are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. It said that his eyes, God's eyes, is upon you everywhere you go. And it's not only it says it pondereth. Pondereth means it's observing what you're doing. God's eyes is every place. It's everywhere. Don't let nobody fool you say, well, I'm going to do this because don't nobody see me. No, God, God eyes sees you. Yes. He sees the young people as well as he sees the oldest ones. Amen? Amen. He sees everything. Open chapter 15. Like I said, we're just going on through chapter 15, verse 3. Listen to what else he says here. Proverbs 15 and 3. He says that the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Beholding the evil and the good. He said that I see the, the good things as well as the bad things. None of us are not getting away with anything. Amen? Amen. We're not getting away with anything. Jeremiah 16 and 17. I'm almost through here. Jeremiah 16 and 17. Listen what the word says here. In Jeremiah the 16th chapter and the 17th verse. It says this. It says that my eyes are upon all their ways. Uh -huh. They are not hid from my face. Oh, y'all write these scriptures down. You got to read God Almighty. Listen to what it says. Jeremiah 16 and 17. It says that my eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face. Neither is their iniquities hid from my eyes. It said that my eyes are upon your ways. He said the same thing. He said your little kiddish ways. He said my eyes is upon you. I'm looking at what you're doing. I'm looking at your attitude. I'm looking at your behavior. I see everything that you're doing. That's the mighty God that loves us so much that he sees us. And whenever God sees us, that means he's watching over you. That's why when in children, y'all hear pastors say this all the time. You've got to be careful what you do, how you act when you're not at home. Amen. Because you never, not only God sees you, but other people see you. Yeah. When you're cutting up outside, you know, people are looking at you. You may not know them, but they know you. They yeah. say, is that Rudy's son over there? Is that DJ? Is he the one that's out there fussing and cussing? And go, Who is that little boy? I know that little boy mama. I know that little boy daddy. I know that little boy 80. I know. I've been to church with them. I see. Is that that little boy that stands up at the church in the, in the bus back there? Is that that little boy? Uh -huh. I don't quite know the girl's name, but is it? Is that one of the daughter that, that got the hair like Is that her acting like that? Is that okay? You don't know who's looking at you. You may be on the bus, you may be in the classroom, you may be in the cafeteria, you may be in the commons. No matter where you are, somebody sees you. Are oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Go to Jeremiah 23 and 24. Boy, here we go. Jeremiah 23 and 24. Listen to what it says. God of mine. Jeremiah, tw Jeremiah 23 and 24. It says, can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, says the Lord? Do not I feel heaven and earth, says the Lord? It says, can I hide any place? Is there any place I can go to hide? You know why people do things in the dark? Because they don't think they're going to be seen. <laughs> they start seeing that some Teddy Peter grass. Turn off the lights. Hey, hey, well, hey, wait. Wait a minute now. And I'm saying well, y'all don't know that song. Y'all know y'all do. <laughs> it means sometimes people have that ten of pentagram spirit. Turn off the lights. Why? Because I don't want nobody to see what we're doing. Sometimes people have what they call roach spirit. You know what roaches are? What? Sometimes they come. Sometimes that's what happens. Sometimes we have that spirit. We only do things in the nighttime. And long as the kid, you go in the kitchen, boy, I don't know 
about y'all, but yeah, we, we had the little pets in our room, in our house too, when we were growing up. Boy, I tell you what, lights is out. You go in and try to get some water, you cut the lights all of a sudden. They be going everywhere. You said, Lord, I'm mercy. I didn't know it was in there. Listen, that's the way our spirit is too. See, the light is the word of God. And when the word of God shines on some of the things we do, sometimes we want to scatter. We used to sing a little song in the old church that said, lights turned on, you can't hide. How do you know you can't hide from God? You can't do that, can you? No, you can't do that. You can't do that. Uh, 17, uh, Jeremiah 17 and 10. Jeremiah 17 and 10. We're almost through here. Jeremiah 17 and 10. We're talking about God sees and he rewards. Uh -huh. Come on, say God sees, God sees and he rewards. And he rewards. Jeremiah 17 and 10. Uh -huh. Listen to what it says. It says, I, the Lord, searches the heart uh -huh. and I try the rings. The rings means your mind. Uh -huh. He said, I'm searching your heart. Every time we come here, God is searching your heart. He's searching your spirit, and he knows the mind. It says, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. You know what he's saying? Everything that you've done, he said, you're going to have to give an account. Amen. Not only everything that you've done, but everything that you didn't do. Uh -huh. See, sometimes we want to say, Lord, I didn't do that, I didn't do that. Yeah, but what about this other thing you did over here? Yeah. What about, see, we're going to have to be, we're going to have to give an account of everything that we do. Whatever you plant in this life is coming up again. Yeah. Let me say that one more time. Children, whatever you plant, whatever you do in this life is coming up again. Listen, you can't expect to plant potatoes and expect to get tomatoes. You can't plant potatoes and expect to get tomatoes. Whatever you plant in this life, that is what's coming up. The scripture said in Galatians 6 and 7, Be not deceived, God is not marked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that same thing shall he also reap. There are some things we thought we'd gotten to buy with, but you're not getting by, and you're never going to get away. You're not, and see, just right there, sometimes when I hear messages like that, even with me, there are some things that I thought I got by with, but God said, I remember it all, and I record it all, and I see all. See, sometimes, like right now, there are some things that we've done. We thought we've gotten away with it. And all of a sudden, because I started ministering, there are some things that popped up in your mind. Uh -huh. You see, that's not the devil. That's the Lord because God wants you to get through that. Uh -huh. Sometimes we can forgive other folks, but we can't forgive ourselves. Uh -huh. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Uh -huh. My God, my God. So God said, what are you doing? What are you doing? My last scripture here, Hebrews 4 and 13. Hebrews 4 and 13. Come on, give me Hebrews 4 and 13. The last one. God sees all and he rewards all. Amen? Uh -huh. God sees all and he rewards all. It said, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in my sight. He said, there's nothing that I don't see. There's nobody that I don't see. I sees everything. It says, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to be would, would have to do. In other words, he said, everything is naked before me. Every thought is naked before me. Listen, the scripture even tells us that even the thoughts that come to our minds, he sees them. Even the words that get before they even come out of our mouth, he says, listen, he said, I know what you're going to say before you say it. Uh -huh. Have you ever seen somebody getting ready to say something you say, ah, don't you say that. Uh -huh. Don't you say that. And listen, I want to let you know, everything that the devil brings to your mind don't mean that it has to come out your mind. It's just like toothpaste. You, whatever words come out of your mouth, you can't turn around and say, oh, I'm sorry. A lot of times we have to do what some of us old folks used to say. If I'm not going to say nothing good, some of us young ones know that too. Know. What do you think about this girl? Child, I ain't going to say nothing. Why? Because God sees it. God is recording it. Amen? Amen? He's doing it, doing it. When David found out that he did this, when Nathan sent him there, when he finally repented, oh, I'm finished. When David finally repented, when he realized he was wrong, he began to say in Psalms 51, he said this, he said, David said, I did evil in your sight. Uh-huh. When David realized that he did wrong, he said, I did evil 
in your sight. Not the people's sight out here. But he said, I did evil in your sight. And he said, Father, forgive me. Because I did wrong. Question is this. Why does he feel sorry for what he did? Does he feel sorry that actually because of what he did or because he got caught? like this because you know what that's the same way we are sometimes when we do things we know it's wrong there's some things we know we don't need to be talking about there's some things we some places we know we don't need to be going there's some things in our life we know we're not supposed to be doing but we turn around and do it anyway and when things fall apart then we turn around and say oh lord i want you to forgive me i'm sorry that i did it but the question is are you sorry because of actually what you did and you know it was wrong or are you sorry because Anybody understand that? Amen. Sometimes even us adults, when we get caught up in stuff, Amen. are we sorry because we did it, or are we sorry because we got caught? With all that in mind, this is the question the pastor wants to leave with you. What behavior are you displaying? What behavior, what things are you doing now that God is dealing with you about? And you have questions about. I said all that to say this. What is it that you're doing that God says it's time for you to correct? Is God dealing with you about something? Let us stand. Is God dealing with you about something? What is it that God is dealing with you about? What is it that you are that you are battling with right now? I realize we're not we don't have a whole lot of people here. But the question is for you, is for each individual. The pastor's not going to call you up and lay my hands on you. I'm not going to do that. But we're going to deal with it on an individual basis right now. What is it that you're dealing with right now? What is it that you that's eating you up right now? Is it unforgiveness? Is somebody that hurt you and you said, I'm not going to forgive them? I'm going to, and that pain is still there? Is it something that somebody said? Is it something that's going on in your life right now? What is it that God, even this morning, has shined a light upon you and say, it's time for you to get over that? How sorry are you? Uh -huh. How repentant are you? Uh -huh. Are you sorry for what you did? Or are you sorry because you got, you got caught? Uh -huh. And see, because of what David did, it cost David something. Amen. Oh, yeah. It cost him the kingdom. Mm -hmm. It cost him not, not only your life, he still lived. But you know what? He brought things up on his family. Yes. Okay? See, sometimes the sins and the stuff you do, it brings a reproach upon the family. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, if I go out here and mess around, I'm preaching here this morning, but I go outside and I'm trying to run down this woman and that woman or whatever, and it hurt, and y'all hear about it, all of a sudden, it not only hurts me, but it what? It hurts you as well. Yeah. Not only you, but it hurts my wife. I've got children. I have colleagues. I have people in the ministry. See, seeing the things that you do, it's more than just about you. It's the world that's around you. When you do something wrong, baby, it's not just about you. It's about your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother. It's about your aunties and your uncles. It affects everybody. God, I wish you knew what I'm saying. Sometimes even our young people, we hear that. Babies, I want you to hear me today. We say, hey, that's my business. I just do whatever I want to do. It's not just about your business. Everything that you do is connected to somebody else. Yes. Young man told me just last week he had a baby by a girl. Well, I'm, I'm not no father. I'm just a baby daddy or whatever. I and I told another dude, you can have my baby if you want to, man. I'm going to get me another. You're not like, good luck. Y'all acting like y'all swapping pecans. I'm telling that's the mentality. What we're talking about, the slave mentality. That's the mentality of some of these kids. They don't realize you're bringing a baby into this world. God sees what you're doing. Yes. The Bible says, even in the dark time, to God, the darkness is just like light. He sees well in the dark as well as he does in the light. Your life is just not about you. So God is saying, why are you repenting? Which direction are you going? And because of what David did, the scripture says, from then on, David never had peace in his family. Amen. 
I know some I know some classmates of mine and some other things that they did something when they was young. They're still dealing with it right now. Sometimes I have phone calls. He said, Kurt, man, I just want to, you know, some of y'all don't know my first name. It's Kurt. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I hear that some of the guys be calling me, man, from different places. They said, Kurt, man, if I would have known back then mm -hmm. what I've known now, I never would have went up anywhere. Well, we were still back in high school. There's some people still dealing with some stuff, the things that happened way back then. Mm -hmm. Once you plant that seed, it becomes alive. Mm -hmm. And you've got, and brothers and sisters, and I say this, we're going to let you go, but you've got to be careful what you do. And what you say, Amen. how you treat other people. Amen. You've got to be careful. Why? Because it's coming back up again. Yes. David never had peace in his family for the rest of his life. Both of his sons was killed. His daughter was raped by his, his son. Amen. And there was always constantly battling in the family. And David never had peace. And you know one thing that really hurts a parent, y'all know it, is when children is fighting against one another. Amen. When brother and sister can't get along. When two sisters can't get along. When two brothers can't get along. Children, you don't know how that hurts a mother. The mother do not want a father do not want the children fighting against one another. That breaks their hearts. Amen. Amen. Hey, kids, you better quit out of just fussing and fighting before you know you this is tussle and fight. Mama come in there. Boy, when we were growing up, I remember my son and daughter, they were, my, my two daughters, they was fussing and fighting. I gave both of them a bell and held both of them and told them, you whoop each other. Mm. <laughs> hey, boy. One of them tapped. Oh. You get me hard. Oh. 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 <laughs> I said, now the first one to cry is the one I'm going to whoop. Boy, they were tearing each other. <laughs> what the hell? I said, boy, that's a mean daddy. That's a mean daddy. Oh, daddy was letting you know what? Brothers and sisters and sisters and brothers, we don't fight. Because God sees. Same way here, brothers and sisters. We don't fight. Because God sees us. Every eye closed and every head bowed. Father, we thank you right now for your word. We thank you, Father, because you sees us. And you rewards us. And we know, Father, and this is just one a one line. But we know we know that you reward the bad things. And you give us the consequences. But we do know that you're a loving Father. That you not only look at the evil, but you also look at the good. And that you reward the good. And we thank you, Father, because it's not only the bad things that we've done, but we've done a lot of good things that other people don't know about. Oh, yeah. And your word tells us that we're going to be rewarded for those things. Yes. Now, Father, we ask you right now to forgive us. Yes. The words that came out of our mouths. Yes. If there's anything in our hearts, Father, that we've done, yes. we ask you to forgive us, oh God. If we've done some deeds yes. that was not right, we ask you, Father, to forgive yes. us yes. in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your darling son, Jesus Christ, who came yes. down the cross for us. Yes. And if we believe in him, we shall not perish, but we will have everlasting life. Yes. Father, we ask, Father, that you will forgive us for all things. We receive your forgiveness in our hearts right now. Yes. Help us to be better. Not bitter, but help us to be better. Yes. And show us, oh God, as you showed Joe, show us the things that we've done wrong or doing wrong. Yes. And when you show it to us, help us that we won't do those things no more. Yes. We thank you for it right there. We ask it all in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Come on, give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah.